Plant available soil nitrogen fluxes and turf grass quality of Kentucky bluegrass fertilized with humic substances by Lindsay Tomes, McDaniel, and Christians in Crop Science of 2021. Turf grass requires frequent and large applications of nitrogen compared with other nutrients because it typically, it's typically the most important nutrient for growth and quality. Management strat strategies to reduce nitrogen losses include optimized irrigation strategies, improved fertilizer recommendations and application timing, and in, in using enhanced efficiency fertilizers. Enhanced efficiency fertilizers and humic substances have been used on turf grass to provide nutrients, improve biological soil health, and reduce the environmental impact of fertilizer applications. I would argue that the biological soil health and the environmental impact of fertilization is a little bit questionable. The main goal of this study was to determine if humic substances incorporated with fertilizers could be classified as an enhanced efficiency fertilizer. And to determine this, the field study a field-based study had two main objectives to determine if incorporating humic substances will increase the plant available nitrogen collected in, in ion exchange membranes over a growing season and to determine the nitrogen release curves of the slow release fertilizer. So they hypothesized that humic fertilizers will, re, will perform equally or better to, in terms of providing plant available nitrogen and provide control or slow release properties compared to no, a known enhanced efficiency fertilizer. This study was conducted in Ames, Iowa on Kentucky bluegrass on native soils. The treatments were humic coated urea, polymer coated humic coated urea, humic dispersible granules, sulfur coated urea, stabilized nitrogen and urea, and a non-treated turf. The treatments were applied at one pound in at the end of April in 2019 and at the end of May in 2020. Okay, this was on Kentucky bluegrass mown at three inches. Turf grass quality was taken on one to nine with six as a minimal acceptable level. Digital images, images were taken for, de, for dark green color index and percent green cover. Okay, the, okay, and then they also used some ion exchange membranes. They put those in the plots and, and, and they determined how much nitrate and ammonium were released into the soil using these membranes. They also used fertilizer mesh, ba mesh bags to determine fertilizer release in the field where they put the fertilizer in mesh bags and then removed mesh bags periodically and determined how much was left by weighing them. The results in discussion. Fertilizer treatments had a significant effect on turf grass visual quality ratings. Now visual quality, as you see here, it was primarily as a result of the non-treated turf where the fertilizers resulted in an increase, including urea. So very rarely, if ever, did the humic dispersible granule, or I'm sorry, the humic coated ureas or the polymer humic coated ureas or any coated product differ from urea. And notice that the turf grass quality maintained acceptable limits from straight urea at one pound for 24 weeks. And there was a there was one occasion at the very end when 27, 20, I guess 27, 28 weeks where the coated products actually resulted in better quality, but they were also declining down to about six. So urea resulted in acceptable turf grass and was the same as uh, the more expensive coated products in terms of turf quality throughout the study. There was no benefit essentially by using these products. They coat, the humic coated urea is relative to just applying urea alone. When you look at green cover, there was no difference between any of the green cover of the, of the plots relative to urea. They were all 89 or 90. There was no differences in the dark green color index from using humic coated urea products compared to urea alone, or even from non-treated turf grass. When you look at the cumulative available inorganic and ammonium nitrogen that they use in the ion exchange membranes, the only months, the only month that there was a difference between urea and any of the coated products was in June. Remember, they applied this in April and in May, or April one year, and then May the next year. And in May, there was no differences. But in June, there was a difference where the polymer coated humic coated urea actually doubled the amount of nitrogen, nitrate, and ammonium through the ion exchange membranes compared to urea in June. But July, August, September, October, November, there were no differences between urea and these other products. It, when you accumulated the total out here, when there was there was 30 micrograms uh, from the polymer coated humic coated urea compared to 23.7 from the urea, when you totaled it all up, but month to month there was no difference between applying any of these products in urea except for in June. That was it. When you see the nitrogen release um, curve from these products, you do see that the sulfur coated uh, treatment releases all of its nitrogen in about 60 days, whereas the polymer coated humic coated ureas in 2019 2020 took about 90 days or even longer in 2019 it was more like 150 or even longer they released all this nitrogen so the in, in indicating that there was some slow release properties to those treatments 
Overall, the fertilizer treatments, including enhanced efficiency fertilizers and the ad- addition of humic substances, had similar turf grass quality compared with urea and greater quality than non treated turf, just like I said. Okay. Now we'll go to the end. The hypo- uh, let's see. The hypothesis that polymer coated humic coated urea fits the criteria of enhanced efficiency fertilizer, which is a fertilizer that improves plant nutrient availability while decreasing the potential nutrient loss in the environment. That's, they, cl- they conclude that. I would argue that they didn't actually measure these variables to the degree that would be valid and so i'm not sure how they can say that but um they make that conclusion and then we go to the the last sentence humic fertilizers did not improve turf grass quality compared with fertilizers alone but all fertilizer treatments had improved turf grass quality relative to non-treated control and provided acceptable turf grass quality for the majority of the growing season so the short and skinny of it is the addition of humic polymer coated humic coated urea compared to urea did not result in any turf grass benefit in the field on Kentucky bluegrass grown on native soils. There was no benefit to spending more money and applying the products. Then you could have just, you could have just applied urea and got the same response as applying these more expensive products. They did confirm very likely at least that the polymer coated, human coated urea did slow the release of urea, but they wasn't determined whether it was from the polymer or from the humic coated product because the the humic coated urea product didn't really have any prolonged response in terms of longevity of release, but the polymer coated humic coated did. So meaning that it was the polymer that imparted these slow release characteristics to it. Okay. If you want the long form version of this short video, you can see it as I'll link it up here. Thanks.